Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson of sharp ratio. In this lesson, we are mainly going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of sharp ratio. So let's start with the advantages first. The first advantage of the sharp ratio is the data for the standard deviation is relatively easy to collect since it's calculated from the stock returns. The second advantage of sharp ratio is that it tells whether the fund manager is actually talented at investing or is it generating higher return because they are taking more risk. So for example, if a fund manager decided to take more risk in order for them to get a higher sharp ratio, then they have to get an even higher expected return for the portfolio. The advantage of sharp ratio is that there's a lot of the financial assets such as stocks, bonds, commodities. So what sharp ratio can do is that no matter it's a, it's a stock, it's a bond or it's a commodity, it's able to evaluate its sharp ratio and compare with each other based on the number that is calculated. Later, we are going to talk about another ratio, which is called the Janssen's alpha. Now, we want to compare it in advance, is that comparing sharp ratio to Janssen's alpha. One benefit of having a sharp ratio is that the sharp ratio always valid. While the Janssen alpha will depends on something called the R squared. So R squared is a statistical term, and don't be scared of this technical technical name. R squared just basically means how sure you are. So if you are getting a 99% for your R squared, meaning you are 99% sure, and if uh, you are getting a 50% 0 0.5 otherwise for your R squared, then that it that means you are 50% sure. While for the sharp ratio, once you get the number, you can straight immediately compare two different portfolios. Now, later after the sharp ratio, we are going to talk another ratio called the trainer ratio. So the trainer ratio basically instead of dividing by the standard deviation is divided by something called the beta that we are going to explain later. However, for this beta, it will change because the beta will depend on which one is their benchmark. By benchmark, it means uh, which other price are they comparing. So most of the case, they are comparing to indices, which means it could be FTSE 100 or S&P 500, for example. But the beta is going to change if you use FTSE 100. And again, it is going to change if you use S&P 500 as your benchmark. However, for the sharp ratio, the standard deviation, the calculation will always be the same, no matter you are institutional investor or are you a retail investor. Okay, that's enough talk for the upside of the sharp ratio. So let's talk about the downsides of the sharp ratio. So for the first downside of the sharp ratio is the sharp ratio is calculated based on the historical return, which means that it is based on the previous year's return that, that we calculate the sharp ratio. And it gives us some sort of idea for the future, but it is not 100% predicting the future. A general guideline is that the sharp ratio should not be used during recession period, especially, for example, during the current coronavirus period, when there is a lot of the company that is going to the recession. And by recession, that means a huge drop in their stock prices. So for anyone who still want to use sharp ratio during the recession period, you can, but you have to make sure that you are taking the light for light period. So for example, during the current coronavirus period, you will be taking the same large data at least from the SARS period and 
in furthermore you might want to discount the performance of the SARS period because this coronavirus period is more severe than SARS. The next limitation for the short ratio is that it's relatively sensitive to the start and the end period of the sample data. What this means is that it will depend on the length or the frequency. So especially if the case when you have a small sample or if you have a daily, monthly or annually data, it is going to affect the number for the short ratio for a little bit. So make sure that when you're using short ratio, you have to be consistent over the period. Another limitation for the sharp ratio is that it somehow ignores the systematic risk or some people might call it the market risk. So for example, this current coronavirus, that is the market risk because it affects the all, all the market, the whole world, instead of in affecting the individual stock. So when we are taking or calculating the standard deviation, we are only looking after the risk for each individual stock. We are not looking after the risk of the whole market or the whole world. And similarly, it also ignores the diversification effects. So when we talk about the diversification effects, is like we have, a, let's just say fashion stock for the Burberry brand, and we have a diversification for, let's just say, the coronavirus, which is the face mask. So if we are able to buy one for the Burberry, which is usually performing really well when there is no any sort of virus, and we diversify it away with buying the face mask, which perform really well when there is some sort of virus, just like SARS or coronavirus. So in this example, if your portfolio combining these two stocks, you should be performing pretty decent, no matter there is a virus in the world or there is no virus in the world. However, if you're using the sharp ratio, the sharp ratio is not going to pick those kind of effects for you. The last one in our list is that the short ratio will have to assume that the stock returns follow a normal distribution. Again, the normal distribution is something about the stats, but don't be too worried about this one because I will be explaining to you in a very simple, easy way. So in reality, the stock return does not really follow the normal distribution because it has a high peak and it has a fat tail. Okay, so what is normal distribution? What is high peak and what is fat tail, by the way? One of the best examples that I would like to use for the normal distribution is the height of the guys in the world. So if you can see this looks like a bell shape, it can, in the middle, it kind of tells you that Generally, the guys, the height is around 170 to 173 centimeters. Uh, in, it is a very rare scenario that there is any guy that is lower than 150 centimeters. And in a very, very rare scenario, there is a guy that is higher than 190 or 200 centimeters. So in a way, the bar actually represents the chance. So if we are having a high bar, that means the chance is very high. And in this scenario, most of the guys in the world, their height is around 172 to 174 centimeters. And in a very rare scenario, we'll be having guys that is around 150 centimeters. And in very rare scenario, we will be having guys that is higher than 190 or 2 meters high. Okay, now, so how about the stock returns distribution looks like? So the stock return distribution looks like this. It does not look really normal, isn't it? 
I keep this red line for you so that it is easier for you to remember the shape of a normal distribution. So a while ago, we mentioned that the bars represent the trends. And in this case, as you can see from the graph, there, the bars are a lot higher between zero to one, that range. So what does it mean is that for the stock return, they most of the time they are having a small increase, just a small increase in the stock return for most of the time. But don't get too happy yet because if you look at the left of the graph, you will see that the tail, so this is what we call the fat tail. And a while ago, this part is what we call the high peak. So high peak is the place where we have a lot of small positive return, but we should not be happy because we have a very fat tail at the left side. And if you can see the number from the left side, they're all negatives. And this fat tail at the left side means there is a, a lot higher chance for recession or for the financial crisis. So again, when we look at the left graph or the red line, if we are following that one, that one is called the normal distribution. And if the stock return is following the normal distribution, then we should be experiencing a financial crisis every around hundreds to a thousand years. But what happened is that because of this fat tail, really high and very fat tail on the left of the side, we are experiencing a financial crisis for almost every 10 years. Now, in reality, every stock has a slightly different shape for the distribution. It's just like the look of the human. Uh, every human has two eyes, one nose, one mouth, but every human looks slightly different from each other. But in order for the shock ratio to work, it has to be kind of generalized and the sharp ratio have to assume that the stock market follows a normal distribution, which in this case, we know it is not fitting perfectly as we are having again, recession every 10 years. And that is a very serious problem. Now, it does not mean that sharp ratio is a very bad risk adjusted performance measure. All it means is that when we are using the sharp ratio, we have to be very careful as usually there will be a lot of the small positive return. And once in on average around 10 years, there will be a very big financial crisis. Okay, so let's recap what we have learned from the sharp ratio so far. The sharp ratio is proposed by the Nobel Prize winner, who is called William Sharp in 1966. The main idea is to get a risk adjusted performance measure based on the reward or the return that we can get from the portfolio, but we also want to compare it with the volatility or the risk of the portfolio. In order to calculate the sharp ratio, we have to get the excessive return from the numerator and we divide it with the risk or the volatility from the denominator. And the excess return can be expressed by the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate. And everything we are going to divide by the standard deviation. And another way of getting the standard deviation is to take the square root of the variance. And that is everything for this short ratio lesson. Thank you everyone for coming and I will see you in the next one.